Imagine watching a movie that is generated by your own brain activity. How cool would that be? Well, this is not science fiction anymore. A recent research project called Mind Video has achieved this feat using a combination of brain imaging and deep learning. In this video, I am going to explain what is Mind Video, some of the cool applications it makes possible and how it works. But before we dive into that, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered what happens in your brain when you watch a movie? Let's find out. When you watch a movie, your brain is constantly processing the visual information that reaches your eyes. This information is processed by millions of neurons in different regions of your brain, especially in the visual cortex. It is located at the back of your head. The visual cortex is responsible for analyzing the shape, color, motion and depth of the objects you see on the screen. But how can we measure the activity of these neurons? One way is to use a technique called Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging or fMRI for short. fMRI uses a powerful magnet to measure the changes in blood flow in different parts of the brain when you see something on screen. When a brain region is more active, it consumes more oxygen and the blood flow increases. By measuring these changes, fMRI can create images that show which parts of the brain are activated by different stimuli. Different patterns of brain activity correspond to different types of images. But can we reverse this process? Can we reconstruct the images that a person is seeing from the brain activity of that person? This is the challenge of visual reconstruction and what Mind Video accomplishes so well. So how does Mind Video work? How can it reconstruct videos from brain activity? Well, the basic idea is to train a deep learning model that can learn the relationships between fMRI data and the video frames. The researchers designed a novel framework that consists of four main components. Marks, brain modeling, multimodal contrastive learning, spatiotemporal attention and co-training. If the terms sound complicated, don't worry. I'll explain each of them in detail and simple language. So masked brain modeling, this component is responsible for pre-processing the fMRI data and removing the irrelevant information. The data contains signals from many brain regions, but not, not all of them are related to vision. For example, some regions may be involved in memory, emotion or language processing. These regions may interfere with the video reconstruction and misguide the model while it is being trained. So, masked brain modeling, it masks out or ignores the non-visual region of the brain and only focuses on the visual regions. This way, the model can concentrate on the most relevant information for vision reconstruction, which is basically recreating the video that you are seeing through AI. The next component is multimodal contrastive learning. This component is responsible for learning the relationship between fMRI data and the video frames in a self-supervised way. What this basically means is that the model can learn useful features and representations from the data without requiring any human to tell it what to learn. In this case, the researchers used a technique which pairs fMRI data and video frames that are similar or dissimilar in content. For example, you can pair a fMRI, fMRI data of a person watching a video of a dog with the video frame of a dog doing something. These are similar data points. You can also pair a video frame of a car with the fMRI data of a person watching a cat. These are dissimilar pairs. Then we can ask the model to distinguish between these pairs and learn which ones are more similar or dissimilar. This way the model learns to match the fMRI data and the video frames based on their content. The next component is spatiotemporal attention. This basically means the model pays attention to both what is happening in the video and when it is happening. For example, in a video of a ball approaching the camera, the model focuses on the direction of the ball as well as from at where it is at different times. The last thing is co-training. So the researchers use two models together, Mind Video and the Stable Diffusion model to improve the quality of video reconstruction. You may know about Stable Diffusion. It is a popular AI image generator. It is also a deep learning model that can generate high resolution images from random noise. It uses the diffusion process. So I will give you a little bit of context on how diffusion works so that you can understand how it is used in Mind Video. So, for example, in reverse diffusion, you can start with a random image full of noise and gradually transform into a clear image by removing the noise step by step. There is also forward diffusion in which you start with a clear image and gradually transform into a random image by adding noise step by step. Stable diffusion uses both forward and reverse diffusion to generate high quality images that are stable and consistent over time, hence the name. Co-training 
in case of mind video works by using mind video to generate a low resolution video frame from the fMRI data and then it uses stable diffusion to refine these frames into high resolution video frames using reverse diffusion this way the two models can help each other improve their performance and produce better results so these are all the major components now what are the results of mind video how well can it reconstruct videos from brain activity well the researchers tested their model on a data set of fMRI data and video frames frames from 10 different subjects who watched 18 different videos here are some examples of the reconstructed videos and how they look like as you can see the reconstructed videos are quite impressive and realistic they capture the main objects actions and events in the original videos they also have a good resolution and smooth motion the researchers also quantified this performance using different metrics one metric is semantic classification accuracy which measures how well the reconstructed videos can be classified into different categories such as animals vehicles sports etc another metric is structural similarity index which measures how similar the reconstructed videos are to the original videos in terms of brightness contrast and structure the researchers found that mind video achieved an average semantic classification accuracy of 85% and an average ssim of 0.19 these numbers are much higher than the previous state of the art models which only achieved 40% accuracy and 0.12 ssim this means that the mind video model can reconstruct videos from brain activity more accurately and more realistically than any other method so far the researchers also showed that their model is biologically plausible and interpretable what this means is they visualized the attention maps of the model and found that it matched the phys physiological processes of the brain for example they found that the model paid more attention to the regions of the brain that are actually known to be involved in processing motion faces and scenes so it makes sense biologically also they also found that the model paid more attention to the parts of the video frames that were more relevant to the content these findings suggest that mind video can learn from and mimic natural mechanisms of human vision so i think this project is a great example of how ai and neuroscience can work together mind video will help us understand how our brain processes visual information and how it differs from person to person it can help us diagnose and treat various neurological disorders that affect vision such as strokes alzheimers or schizophrenia it can also help us enhance our communication and expression and help us create new forms of art and entertainment by creating videos right from our imagination but it is not perfect at the moment this is still early stages of the research and there are many challenges ahead for example fmri data is not very easy to obtain it requires expensive and bulky equipment so it is not something that you can do at your home right now and there is also questions like who will own the rights to these reconstructed videos right i want to hear your thoughts what cool tech products do you think could be made with this tech when it is fully developed my answer is in the comments and i am curious to hear what you think thank you for watching have a lovely day